Welcome back to my garage. Supercharged 50cc two-stroke engine. We've seemingly been struggling a lot with fueling and ignition, cycle to cycle variations, in inconsistent readings. I think the problem is not enough heat. I think I've underestimated the cooling properties of methanol and nitromethane, and I've underestimated the efficiency of my cooling system. I'm running a really huge tank of water. There's a large buffer there. It's hard to heat up the cylinder when you have this large buffer. We're gonna fix that today and uh, Hopefully this week we'll get some proper readings and some nice numbers. My expectations are high for this week, as always. Before that there's an issue I have to address. Established titles. I'm in a bit of a sticky situation here. You see, there's been popping up a lot of videos about how established titles is a scam lately around the internet. And I've done promotions for them in three videos earlier and the plan was to do a couple more. But people are saying established titles is a scam. That you're not actually becoming a lord nor becoming a real landowner of land in Scotland through buying their product. Here's the part where I should say how sorry I am for promoting this scam and all that. But you see, I can't see the scam in this. I thought it was obvious that this was about buying a novelty gift. Something fun to give to your brother or sister, making them a lord, having a laugh, a conversation starter, icebreaker, something funny. It certainly is obvious to me. But if you bought this through my links and you now feel scammed because you're not really a legal landowner in Scotland and you're not really a lord, then I'm sorry. All of this is clearly stated on their site though. And I also feel that it should be completely obvious that this is what you're buying, like a fun gift, whilst helping global reforestation efforts, which seems to be true. I did some digging and they are donating to the mentioned charities. There's one thing, if there aren't any actual physical dedicated plot unique for each and every customer, and they stated the first 200 people would get plots next to mine, if that's not true, if those statements are true, then I feel scammed too. There has to be dedicated plots, not that you own them legally, but they're yours, they're dedicated to you. And you can, if you choose, search up your number and visit that plot. And it has to be unique for you. That's my condition. This condition has to be met for me to not feel scammed. There's nothing on their site indicating that's not the case. Would be interesting uh, traveling to Scotland and uh, Trying to visit one's plot though. Maybe bring a few people from the channel with the dedicated plots next to mine. You know the two stroke stuff in Kingdom. Anyways, I won't do promotions for established titles in the future. Not because I think they're a scam, but because people portray them as such on the internet. If I did the promotions, it would lead to lots of comments about it being a scam and I would have to deal with that. It's not my job to defend this company against scam claims. I have other more important stuff to spend my time and energy on. I will also be extra careful about what I promote on this channel. Make absolutely sure it can't be interpreted as a scam. Okay, back to the show. I'm gonna make up a moped sized uh, coolant system for the engine and that might be enough with this fuel. A small pump to keep the water flowing. I'll need to get some uh, fittings to, uh, for hoses to fit this pump. And um, this should keep things nice and hot. We can always make it larger if, uh, if it's too small. I'll go buy some fittings and uh, hoses and stuff and I'll see if I can find a small fan for this. These are the correct hoses, I promise. <sighs> Thank you. 
I've wired that little water pump to this switch and I've wired this switch to a relay which controls the fuel pump. Moped sized radiator propped up on this chair. This is temporary unless it works well. <laughs> and plan is to use this fan to cool everything. And this hairdryer is there for preheating the engine, which seems to work exceptionally well, actually. I thought it would take ages. Just in five minutes, it's uh, gone from 10 degrees Celsius, what the engine was sitting at. Now after five minutes, it's about 30 degrees. So this works exceptionally well, actually. The engine, the engine has been running really inconsistent. I've been giving it more fuel, less fuel, more timing, less timing, switching out plugs, changing the plug gap, and uh, the results have been really inconsistent. I think the problem has been what we're attacking now. Not enough, not enough heat. Not enough heat to vaporize the fuel properly. Vaporize it enough so that it can burn. It won't burn in a liquid state. I think our problem has been we've been burning a little bit of the mixture. Most of it has been just passed through the engine, cooling everything down, keeping it at this state of not burning all the mixture. This makes sense in a lot of ways, and especially how I apparently could run the engine so lean that it wouldn't fire at all. That's not my experience with alcohol fuels. You could run it lean, but then you just melt the plug or piston instantly, like in seconds. I'm confident in this theory, like I am in every theory. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it behaves. Currently sitting at about 25 degrees. I'll turn on my hair dryer and uh, the pump. Bring it up to around 40. While that's going on, I'll do a little cleaning and uh, purge the system of gasoline. It's been sitting the whole weekend now with gasoline in the engine. Purge out the gas, fill it up with uh, nitrile methanol and uh, we'll see how it behaves. timing the more normal numbers getting at 30 degrees now need to run worse with uh, less timing I still think that's a heat issue though so uh I'm gonna refuel and then we're gonna try without a fan blowing on the radiator. We're up at about 50 degrees Celsius now. If it still doesn't heat up any more than that, we'll turn off the pump. If this helps, then it's great news for uh, running it in a bike in uh, hot weather at Bonneville, cause uh, I don't think cooling will be an issue. Well, cooling won't be an issue regardless, it seems, but uh, there's other issues. <laughs> More timing.
more heat didn't seem to help very much. I'm not sure if we got enough heat though in the actual cylinder. It might be practically impossible to get it hot enough even though we run the water really hot. The fuel might be locally cooling down things enough to not make the rest of the engine's uh, temperature really relevant. That's a theory, another theory. I've overlaid all the graphs from the runs I've done today. There's no proper runs, just trying to heat the engine up and see how it behaves. There's a clear tendency though, between 13 and 14,000 RPM, something really strange happens with the power readings and with the pressure readings. And we're not really building any pressure yet. Before this weird stuff happens, we're between 3 and 5 PSI. And then everything goes haywire. I'm starting to wonder if I've grossly underestimated the airflow through this engine. We might need to run the blower faster. Could also be the fuel is still burning when the transfers are opened. And as the pressure differential is really low, cause uh, reversion, not enough pressure down there, there might be some combustion in the crankcase. It is funny when a pipe seems to go all pulse jet on its own with the flames and... Uh, <laughs> I basically built a pre-pump for a pulse jet that does nothing except being a pulse jet. I think we need a different pulley ratio, spin the blower faster, build more pressure. Also think all that unburnt fuel and oil is stealing all the energy from the pipe, making it not only hit far too low if it's hitting at all, but also stealing all the oomph from that hit. All the energy is spent vaporizing oil and fuel in the exhaust, not uh, building pressure. These are my theories now. We could try adding some acetone to the fuel. That would make it ignite easier. Let's have a quick look at the compressor map here. Troubles are happening at 13 and a half thousand RPM divided by 1.67. That's the blower drive ratio times 12.67 internal drive ratio in the blower about 100,000 rpm this corresponds well with the compressor map at 100k rpm you should expect between 0.35 and uh, 0.18 bars of pressure we need to spin it faster much faster i think we should try spinning it so that we hit at least 160k where we're hitting 100k now and that should bring us up to closer to one bar i haven't got material large enough to make a pulley except for this Already a pulley piece of material. Room to machine a 85 millimeter pulley here. And then we could drive it one to one. Another and maybe better option. Getting a selection of these pulleys from Rotrex and then machine up a hub for them to fit the crankshaft. In that way I can easily mix and match and try out different ratios without much work. It would be fast. That is correct. I overnighted myself to Denmark and picked up these uh, pulleys from Rotrex. Definitely the fastest and most reliable way of shipping. Maybe not the cheapest, but I don't like waiting for stuff. And it was a nice trip. A huge thank you to Rotrex yet again. Plan is to make an adapter to fit this mounting flange onto the crankshaft. Then I can mix and match between which pulley I use on the blower and which I use on the crankshaft. We can get a whole bunch of different ratios. Let's disassemble and see how we can make that adapter. I know there's going to be a challenge. I will need to make an adapter for this to sit spaced out like that. There's a slight problem where clearance between this nut and these holes for mounting the pulleys. There's enough clearance between this nut and the holes for mounting this pulley. It will become a problem when you go and try to crank that nut down though. Because there won't be enough clearance for, uh, for this. Supposed to be 28.145. I'll take that. Proud member of the No Parting Tool Club. 
And you know what they say about hack sauce, builds character. And also it's a little bit safer when there's so much fuel around me in this, uh, in this uh, rough cutting and grinding area. I've set the piston at the top dead center with a dial gauge. And now I'm lining up my uh, timing marks again. A little whack to seat it on the taper. And now crossing fingers. This won't move as I tighten this bolt and also that I don't strip the threads of the bolt with the impact wrench. Like that. Should be sufficient. Testing tomorrow. Up until now, we've been running a 1.67 to 1 dry ratio for the blower. 1.67 turns of the crankshaft for one turn of the blower. And that in turn is geared 12.67 to 1 inside that uh, blower gearbox. I started out with this conservative dry ratio because I thought there couldn't be much airflow through this engine relative to what that uh, blower is uh, meant to see. Here's the numbers from the compressor map for various RPM points with the old driver ratio, 1.67. Fully I used was the only one I could find locally. And uh, at 15k, half a bar. I thought that was a good starting point, like a mild number. It might actually not be this high though. Airflow might be much higher in this engine and we could be down at around 0.2 bars. That matches better with our readings. We're probably seeing around four or five PSI. 6 psi at 15,000, which is really low. Too low to prevent reversion into the crankcase. 1.14 to 1. Now we should see about 0.1 bars at 5k, between 0.35 and 0.2 bars at 10k, and between 0.9 and 0.65 at 15k. I've set an RPM limit at 18k, because 200 is about the limit for the blower. At that point we'll see between 1.4 and 0.8 bars. This all depends on airflow. High numbers at 0.2 kilos per second, low numbers 15 kilos per second. At low RPM the high numbers are lower. If we imagine this engine as a 100cc 4-stroke, burning that 50cc volume twice for a 4-stroke cycle, that 4-stroke would have a valve overlap of uh, 260 degrees, 130 degrees of transfer duration times 2. Making it even worse, a large portion of those 260 degrees of valve overlap are with the valves really open. In a four stroke, they're just slightly open. Here, they're fully open part of that time. It'll be interesting to see how it behaves now. I've set the ignition timing back down to 15 degrees at 13,000 RPM again. We'll go from there. Should be much more pressure now, so this might be a good idea. Keep things from uh, melting.
a year of uh, testing on the floor there. <laughs> Not exactly the results I was hoping for. Seems like I've made an even worse engine, but a better flamethrower pulse jet. There's something going on here that makes this not work. A nice thing to ponder over the weekend. See you next time.